Hey guys, uh, my name is Alberto Rodriguez and I was uh, doing research under Professor Davide Valdese. Um, and what we tried to discover in this uh, research effort was if using indirect paths uh, to link requirements to code was of any use or could it improve the practice of uh, identifying which code pieces are implementing which requirements. Um, and so we can dive into that um, a little more. Um, so what we really want to do is to be able to uh, take any requirement from a software engineering project and be able to understand which uh, code fragments implement that requirement. Um, this is especially useful for uh, very, very big projects, uh, including government contracts um, and uh, safety critical systems in which we have to ensure that every requirement was met. Um, it becomes too large for a human to accurately be able to decide which classes implement the requirements or to decide if the requirement is fulfilled to the satisfaction of a certain degree. Um, and so what we really would like to do is for computers to do this for us and to be have a certain amount of certainty that uh, the code that we uh, select implements the requirement that we are interested in. Um, and so I'll go into a little bit about the theory and the classical way of doing this and then how we did it and how we um, differs from that. Um, so as we can see, the the current approach to deciding which classes implement which requirement is to do a direct comparison of the requirement to the class. Um, and the question we're trying to decide is, uh, so there's this middle layer of design documents. So in uh, software projects, what happens is you first write some requirements uh, and they define what the system should do. And then the next logical step is to design um, an architecture that will allow the easiest and most flexibility in uh, implementing those requirements. And so that is what, so that is what we see in this middle layer. Um, and then right under that, finally, we get the actual programmers to implement these designs and fulfill the requirements. And that's all good. Um, and so the current approach is to take the requirement, take the class, and uh, do a direct comparison, hence the name direct. Um, so what we tried to discover was, what if we use these uh, design documents? And if, are they of any use to this direct comparison? Um, so what we did was that we would compare requirements to designs, and then designs to classes. And through various aggregation methods uh, that we'll go into later on, um, come out with a score that compares requirements to classes, just like the direct method. But this new method goes through these different paths. And so what we see here is the different colors uh, are the whether the computer is guessing or whether those traces were given or those comparisons. So this dark bold line would represent traces that have been given to us by the software project leads, right? So there are verified sources that these uh, documents are associated. So in this case, uh, requirement one is directly associated with uh, design one. And similarly, design one with class one. And these are what we call oracles, which uh, basically boils down to being uh, secured by the project lead. This is verified um, in comparison to the computer doing the comparisons, which is, we can see in the slight dash lines. Um, so in this way, we uh, compared the two text documents using a couple of uh, natural language processing techniques. Um, and so those are calculated calculated versus uh, or uh, being oracles. Um, and so and then we're going to go a little bit more into uh, the new technique and the details of that. Um, so the, the main question we're trying to answer is, uh, can the indirect traces provide any help to the direct traces? Not necessarily provide a better score, but can they, in addition to the direct traces, could it be a use? Um, and the next question is, what if we only have parts of the system identified, right? So if we go back a little bit, here we have both the requirements of the designs and designs to class and trace. But what if we don't have that? What if our project isn't as developed as that? What if we only have requirements to designs? Or what if we only have designs to classes? 
Or what if we don't have anything traced at all? Does the indirect pass actually help? And so that's what we will be diving in. Um, and so this is a little bit more in the details of how our technique works. Uh, for more details, you should most definitely read the paper that we will be writing about this. But uh, So we use two natural language processing techniques, uh, LSA, uh, Lomantic Semantic Analysis, and VSM, Vector Space Model. Um, and so what, what really happens is that we, uh, given these two documents, these techniques provide a score. Um, and so what we're labeling here, uh, the score would be R1D1, right? as given by the comparison. Um, and then similarly, D1C1. So now you have these two scores. But what we really want is one score comparing requirement one to class one. So the question, uh, it begs the question, how do we take these six scores and combine them into one? Um, and so that goes into a little bit of the path aggregation. So we can sum them. We can take the median. We can take the maximum. Um, and it must be specified that um, so to decide what we what we ended up doing was uh, splitting into three different paths in this case. So we would do uh, R one C one, but through D one, R one C one through D two, R one C one through three three. And the way we computed those would be to take this score, take this score, and then we multiply them to create a single score. But yet that still begs the question, right? At the end of the day, we want a single score, and here we would have three different scores um, through design one, design two, and design three. And so there's various ways to combine those to be the same score. Uh, again, we could use the maximum, we could use the medium, the, the sum. Uh, and uh, so, yeah, so those were the different varying techniques we did. We also varied the number of features that NLPs use that we. We scaled these in different ways to see if that would make a difference. Ended up making a difference. Um, and for more details, you should really look into the details of the paper. But um, here's a little example of what I meant. Um, so if we have 0.4 from R1 to D1 and uh, 0.6 from D1 to C1, what ends up happening is that we multiply those, right? And so you have these multiplications. Uh, and as you can see, it's in every case, right? And But we still need to aggregate. So what we do is uh, we can sum them, boom. We can take the median, which would be the middle, and then the max. Um, and this also displays a normalization as some of the details beyond this uh, little video, but feel free to check it out in this example. Um, we also, um, just quick, um, so on top of, for, uh, for the techniques of aggregating multiple values into one, um, there is, we did the sum, the median, the max, but we also wanted to uh, maybe explore some machine learning techniques and see if that would help us. Um, so we used uh, an IBK and a random forest, and a naive Bayes classifier, um, varying the balancing technique of the data using uh, overbalancing, underbalancing, and no balancing. Uh, and this is all performed on the Weka uh, interface, and uh, the results. Um, of this uh, were pretty promising. Uh, we would see, um, so these are the raw results right here. It's a little hard to discern what is happening, but if we take the direct score and we take the indirect score and we come, or we take the, the best direct technique and we take the best indirect technique and we combine them um, and we compare those, that combination of the new technique and the previous and then compare that to the previous, um, subtract those, divide by the just uh, make it relative to the previous technique. What we find is that we actually, uh, we improve the previous technique, specifically the mean average position in every case here. So even when there are no traces provided, so if we remember uh, there's traces from the requirements to the designs and then designs to designs to classes, uh, there are cases where you don't have any of those traces. So you are left for the technique to provide for itself. Well, even in that case, the average position is improved. And that's, that's really good news. Um, but even better news is that if you do have some of the traces provided, um, you can see a really big growth in uh, the, the precision of this technique. Um, and then similarly, this is on uh, the Easy Clinic data set. We also have the drone data set. Um, so this is the raw data again. And then when we look at the game, uh, we see huge improvements, right? 
And even even when there's none, we still improve. So this is really, really promising. Uh, some of the future directions we want to take this in is, so why is it that this average position is so much higher than this? When in reality, if they're both the bottom part and the, 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 the lower part, shouldn't it be about the same? Um, so what is what is this thing that is, is 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 upper or is lower more valuable than upper? Is it the sheer number of connections? Uh, uh, that is the next. Uh, those are the future directions of where we want to go and uh, and the questions we want to answer. Uh, but just to summarize, we uh, so this new technique uh, called indirect paths in combination with direct paths, which is the current way of assessing uh, whether a requirement is implemented by a particular class through so text analysis. Um, so the combination of these techniques uh, improves the mean average position in all cases. Uh, in, in the case where you have both the bottom and lower level traits, you have just the top, or you have just the bottom, or you have none at all. Um, and so that is really good news. Um, and yeah, we are hoping uh, to have more results. Um, and this has been fantastic. Thank everybody. Uh, who helped me out, specifically Davide. Uh, you were amazing, uh, and I really appreciate it. Um, yeah, thank you guys.